Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this is the Avocet Pioneer Plus, a lock I've been wanting to pick for a while, just never had the opportunity, I hadn't owned one. I have picked a modified Pioneer Plus, and that was one of the most difficult challenge locks I've ever picked. In fact, I'm going to link to the video uh, probably up here on a card and down there in the description and uh, pinned comments, but uh, it's worth checking that out. But I never picked a base Pioneer Plus. And this is a British Standard One Star lock made by Avocet, um, who you might know from locks such as the ATK and the ABS with a pin in pin with a magnetic pin. Again, I picked a couple of those recently as well. Might list them below too. You are lucky, aren't you? Right, you'll see I've partially disassembled it, and that's because I think gutting this is going to be a real pain. Um, mostly because not only does it have anti snap features, so it's partially cut, I think these are trap pins just either side of position two, and that means I won't be able to use a front follower um, particularly well, so I'm going to have to use segmented followers. You can see that this is the uh, segmented followers and also the, the cam that is usually in the middle of the lock. So yeah, it's gonna be a pretty horrible gut, and <laughs> and also probably a pretty horrible put back together too. Okay, so um, what is it? It's a six pin dimple lock. You can see the bitting here is probably not as good as I've seen on some of these dimple locks but it has a, a nice um, high set pin number four, so it isn't too bad either. Works as you'd expect. There we go. Nice and smoothly. And that's about it really. It's a, it's a good British standard one star lock. Right, let's get on and pick it. So we're in the vise and I'm going to be using a right-handed flag. So that means I'm going to be tensioning it anti-clockwise in case the spool's inside. And there's another reason why is because this way um, I'm likely to fire the trap pins and you'll see that they cause the lock to sort of re-lock. Um, and we might be able to do a 360 on this. All right, let's have a go. So um, probably just lifting on a, a light tension to begin with. One, two, pin three now. Little click. Pin five. Back out. One, two, three, four. Pin six there. Seems set. Pin one now, it feels like it's binding a little bit. Little click there. Pin two, little click. Very light on that. Pin one's just popped back up. Good. It's going along with pins now. Pin, oh, pin six, five, four, three. Ah, oh, something's binding there. I think it's pin two again. Little click. Pin four. Just tiny clicks on these pins. Little click on pin two again, pin five there. Little click on pin one. Everything seems like setting pin four now. And we're open, there we go. So what can I tell you about that? Very, very light clicks. I wasn't forcing it and multiple clicks. Felt like it was either serrated or very light spools or spools which didn't entirely um, en enact. So you'll see it's definitely open, but as I turn it, it locks. And that means I've got to find pin two, tap it, and we'll turn all the way around again until we get two. And because the tension is in there, trap pin won't fire into the open keyway at this position, but it will, um, oh, some of the other pins might get there though. Let's, uh, there we go, move it around. It should fire again into the open pin chambers at this position. Again, pick pin two. and get it. There it 
there we go, got it. And we are back round. Oh, well, have we just uh, fired off the, the trap pin again? Yeah, we have, there we go. And now we're back round. So yeah, fully locked, full 360. Now, oh, definitely gonna have to speed this next bit up because this is gonna be a horrible gutting. All right, wish me luck. Okay, <clears throat> so what I've done is it looks like I've managed to actually uh, get the trap pins caught in uh, the tailpiece of the lock here. So it just seemed thin enough for that to happen. Um, that's a bit of a noob mistake. So I'm probably going to cut the camera off and see what I can do about freeing those up. Might be able to do it by um, hitting it a few times. Um, to free those pins out. Okay, we're back and we did have a little bit of a disaster. We damaged one of the springs, but not so much that I think I can't save it. These were the trap pins, and I'll show you what I mean by being trapped in the tailpiece of the lock in just a second. Um, let's just finish gutting this, and it looks like it just has spools. So the reason I didn't reshoot this video is because um, I I made a mistake. I thought I'd pre-planned. I did some thinking and I still got it wrong. Some of you are probably screaming at me if you've ever uh, disassembled one of these before. I just wanted to show how even people who are experienced at gutting locks, and yes, I hate gutting locks, but yes, I'm actually quite experienced at it, um, do get things wrong. So um, hopefully, if you've watched this video and you're going to try gutting one of these yourself, you might have just learned a lesson there, which means that you might not make the same mistake that I did. And I think sometimes that's important. So there you go. I don't have to show every everything that's always a success, do I? Um, so there we are. Here we go. So yeah, um, it's very strange. These little spools did need setting, but they needed setting so lightly that they actually acted like serrations. It, the, the pins didn't need to be set so um, that uh, they fell into a, a nice deep false set at all. They just bounced around a bit like serrated pins. Then the key pins are all standard. I can see why this is a, a one star and a three star lock. There's nothing too special in here. It's just spool, spool pins and a couple of small trap pins. Okay, so what happened with those trap pins? Well, here is a tailpiece of the lock. I probably could have slid a shim in from the front once I got it out so far, but I didn't. And this tail piece there where the circlip goes on is definitely, definitely wide enough for one of these trap pins to, to engage, which it did. Luckily, they're rounded tips and a couple of quick um, thwacks on the back of the lock with a plastic handled screwdriver meant that I could bounce the pins out um, but clearly I, I, I failed on one of the pins where I just um, damaged the spring when I withdrew the lock which is a bit of a shame but it's okay like I said I think it's recoverable so there you go that was the Avocet Pioneer Plus pick and gut um, and hopefully you'll learn from my disaster. <laughs> all right, I'll put this thing back together and I'll see you all next time.